In today's video, we're going to talk about writing Selenium scripts in Python. Now, the first step in writing a Selenium script in Python is to start the session. And you can do that with this command, driver is equal to webdriver.firefox, and this starts a Firefox session. Next, you can ask the web driver to take some action on the browser. And this could be something like driver.get, and then you enter a URL, which in this case is admlucid.com. After that, you can request information from the browser. For example, there's titles, subtitles, different text, text boxes, and so on. One example is you can say that the title is equal to driver.title, which will return the title of the web page. After that, depending on what you want to test, you can establish different waiting strategies. And an example of a waiting strategy is driver.implicitly wait 0.5 seconds. And so you can have different types of wait strategies, for example, explicit waits, implicit waits, and we'll cover this later on in the video. Next, another thing you can do is you can find an element. For example, you can use uh, driver.findElement and you can have by name or by uh, ID uh, and you can locate that element. Uh, for example, on this, we have driver.findElement and we have it by name. You can also take actions on those elements. For example, you can say send keys and you can type in selenium and then send that in that element. You can also request element information. For example, you can say that the text is equal to message.text for different elements, and you can have a specification of what the message is, and then you can try to retrieve what the text of that message is. And finally, to end your Selenium script session in Python, you have to end the session, which is just driver.quit. So right now I have my project from previously open. And right now in this project, if you go to our previous video, this is where I left off. Now in today's video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some different types of functions in our Python project to test this web page. And I'm going to show you the web page first that we're going to be testing. So it's this web page right here. This is the web page we're going to be testing. And we're going to play around with all of these different web elements. For example, this text area, this text box, check boxes, radio boxes, upload, uploading files here, and then these buttons and so on. So let me refresh this page. So this is what we're going to be working with. And so let us begin. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function, a uh, new class uh, in here, or a new file, a Python one. So I'm going to go here, right click, go to new, I'm going to click Python. And again, remember, we have to start it with test underscore in order for PyTest to work. And this time, I'm going to call it selenium underscore commands. Uh, it's going to be a Python file. So I'll click that and then go ahead and press enter. Now, to begin this project uh, or this file, I'm going to start it the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy some code over, actually. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that over. Oops. Copy this over. So the first thing I do, again, is I import Selenium, especially its web driver. And then I import PyTest. And this time, instead of putting this PyTest fixture into the conf test file that we had previously, I'm actually just going to keep it in this uh, file so that you can see it all together. And so in this first function, uh, this PyTest fixture function, what I'm basically doing is I'm creating a Firefox instance and I'm passing it over into the later functions. And you see that I'm basically specifying the web driver as Firefox, and then I'm maximizing the window. And then, yeah, so I've commented out the driver.quit right here. And the reason I commented out driver.quit is because um, I want to keep the window open so you can see what's going on instead of it closing the window right away. So that's our first function. Now let's begin uh, creating some functions that we can use to test different things in the Firefox. So uh, in our uh, URL. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to create one called test button. So F test button. 
it's uh, it'll be a Firefox. So press enter. And the nice thing about using PyCharm is it gives you a bunch of different uh, suggestions on what to uh, what you should write in your code. So you can autofill, it can debug for you, and so on. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do Firefox.get. And what we want to do is we want to go to our URL, which is right here. So I'm going to copy this URL right here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it as a string. After that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tell it to uh, Firefox dot implicitly wait, and I'm going to set it as 10 seconds. And what this does is it basically opens up the browser, waits for a bit so that if there's any JavaScript uh, elements on the web page, it can load that. And then we work with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to specify that the title is equal to Firefox dot title. And I want to assert that uh, the title, I want to assert that the title is equal to ADM Lucid. So actually, this should be like this, because if we go back to our web page, uh, and we inspect the elements on this web page, we should be able to find the title up here, ADM Lucid, like that. So actually what I'm, I'm missing is I'm missing a space right here. And uh, so that's something I'm missing. And there we go. So ADM Lucid. Okay. Now after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify button four is equal to Firefox dot find element. And I'm going to say it's by, uh, we're going to use by dot ID. And then the value of that ID is going to be button four. And then what we're going to tell it to do is we're going to say button four dot click. And this will click the button. And we have that right now. Um, and let me go back to our web page right here. And let me go to button four, right click, inspect. Uh, and we see that its value is button four for its uh, uh, for its ID. So by ID, this value is button four. So basically that's what we have. We're using an ID and that the ID value is button four. And let me save this. And actually I'm gonna go ahead and run this one function right here. So run this test. And it opened up my other window, but I dragged it over and it clicked button four and this popped up, button has been disabled. And you might wonder why did that pop up? Well, it's because on our website, we coded it so that when you click the button, this pop-up will pop up. So that's normal. What we expected to happen will happen. But you notice that there was an alert that popped up. And so if we want to make it so that it accepts the alert, what we can do is we can say Firefox dot switch, switch to uh, dot alert dot accept. And now we can run this again. Pull this over. And it basically accepts the alert instantly. And so we don't see the alert there anymore. And yeah, so that's what happened. And I actually want to show you something else. Um, if I scroll to, yeah. Basically, yeah, if I scroll here, there's nothing saying that it failed because we asserted the title is equal to that and that is true. So that's something else. Okay, so let me write another function. Uh, this time I'm gonna write another function and this function I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna call it def test score click button after validate text. Firefox, and we're going to say firefox.get, and then what we're going to do is we're going to paste our URL over again, so web elements, and one, we're going to say it's equal to find element, by is equal to by.id, and value is equal to button one. Okay, so we have that, we specify what button one is. And then we're going to say that if uh, 
simple button one in button one dot yeah underscore attribute name is equal to value if this then what we're going to do is we're going to print button one dot is enabled and then what we're going to do is button one dot click afterwards and now i'm going to go ahead and run this so basically what i'm saying is if this button one on this value so this is basically the text on the web page right here so if i go to here it says button one right here right inspect inspect value button one right there so that's the text so if it's equal to this then we'll say that uh, it is enabled we'll print whether it is enabled or not the button and then we'll click it and then we'll see what happens so go ahead and run that pull it over and we see that button one has been disabled because we clicked it and what we also see is if i scroll down or scroll here um it says true and that's because the button is enabled so the button is enabled now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another statement and instead of using is enabled what i'm going to use instead this time is is displayed I'll go ahead and come back here i'm going to print is button one displayed Write it over it's right here and then i scroll down so this first one is true and it actually says that the test failed so let me see what happened if i go to here value unexpected alert message dismiss user prompt um, and if i go keep going down I'm going to open up this a little bit bigger so we can see a little bit clear go all the way down and it basically says that unexpected alert present exception and essentially what that is saying is that we didn't close the alert after button one was clicked so what i can actually do is i can uh, take this right here copy that and then paste it under here and then basically we'll accept the alert after we click button one and then we'll check the status so that alert was causing some issues with checking status. So I'll go ahead and run that again. And I drag my window over, it accepts the status, and then it's like this, and now it passes. So now it's good. So now first it says true that the button is enabled. After we click it and accept the alert, uh, the button is still displayed on the web page. So that is the second thing that we wrote today. Let's write another function. Uh, this time, instead of writing the whole function out, I'm just gonna paste it over so it's a little bit faster. Now that we have a general idea of what's going on, go ahead and paste this with buttons. Uh, this time we're going to this uh, URL again and we're finding button two. And then we're basically saying that we're trying to display whether the button is enabled and whether it is displayed. And then we're checking for those statuses. So go ahead and run this again. And we see that the button is both enabled and displayed. So that's good. Okay, let's run another, uh, let's create another function. Uh, this time we're gonna deal with text bosses. So I'm not gonna copy and paste. So I'm gonna say definition. I'm gonna create a new definition, uh, our new function, test. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to text the text box and then we're going to use firefox as our uh, thing to pass into it firefox.get oops and then what i'm going to do is we're still using this url right here so i'm going to copy that url yeah and then go ahead and enter and since we're working with text boxes we're going to make our first variable equal to text box and we're going to do firefox find element and we're going to do by is equal to by dot 
ID, and then we're gonna do value is equal to text one. The next thing we're gonna do is text box one uh, dot clear, and then text box one dot send keys, and we're basically going to type um, welcome to Selenium Python automation. Now that we've written that, um, we're gonna go ahead and run this. Basically, we're finding that text box, we're clearing anything in that text box, and then we're setting this key. And again, this text box one is basically just this area right here. If I inspect that, it says text one. That is the ID, and that's what we do, text one. So go ahead and run this. drag it over and it basically types in what we want it to type in. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close this and let's write some more functions to deal with uh, text boxes, text areas, and so on. The next function we're going to deal with is one dealing with a text area. And essentially it's the same thing as a text box, except for it's a bigger area to type and it's this one right here. So again, let's go here and we're going to write, um, we're going to write dev, uh, test uh, text area uh, and then we're going to pass Firefox and I'm going to copy and paste this time uh, to save us some time because it's relatively the same exact concept so go ahead and paste right here we're basically going there finding the text area this time we're using CSS selector that's something you have to notice and in order to get the CSS selector again same thing uh, since uh, this time we're working with text area 4 I go to here, text area four right here, I right click, inspect, uh, and then it's right here, it's open. I can actually get text area four uh, by um, going here, right clicking this again, and then copying and going to CSS uh, selector right here. So copy selector, if I paste this right here, it's that. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. So text area four, and that's what we have right here. But again, uh, we're going to clear that and we're going to send S. And this time what we're going to, I'm actually going to specify S is equal to, um, I'm going to type, I'm going to copy some stuff over so we can just paste it in there. I'm just going to copy this and we'll just paste this right here. Internal tool, whatever. Uh, let's run this and see how that works. Drag it over again, and yeah, so it pastes right here. But dragging over, we see that Selenium was originally developed by Jason Huygens, and yeah, that's exactly what we want. Nice, so that's text areas and text boxes. Now let's work with some checkboxes and stuff. So I'm going to write a function basically to check a box on a web page. So test underscore checkbox, box, and I'm going to type firefox.get and this time it's going to be our same URL so we can copy that over. Actually I'm just going to copy this whole line. Copy that over and then I'm going to tell it to wait five sec 10 seconds again. So I'll implicitly wait 10 seconds and now I'm going to say that the checkbox 2 checkbox 2 I'm going to say that it is Firefox dot find element by is by dot name instead this time. And I'm gonna say that the value for this is check box two. And then what I'm going to do is if check box two dot is underscore selected, we'll go ahead and print the checkbox has been selected or actually I uh, I, I'm, I actually I'm not going to do this right now what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to say checkbox to dot click and so first let us just click the checkbox to begin with so uh, go ahead and run this this should essentially just click the checkbox 
right now we're using by name by the way so it should pop up yeah pop up some window and then it clicks the checkbox so i drag this over right here so it didn't click the checkbox so now we're going to go to and try and debug this so why did i not click the checkbox well let's see let's see why so if i drag all the way down to here the bottom of the error message element not interactable exception so if i go to here checkbox 2 is right here and if i see what how we specified it checkbox 2 maybe we got the wrong locator so that's something that common that's really common so i'm going to expect that again go to here and go ahead and by name so name is checkbox 2 i'm going to go ahead and try to copy its name actually i'm just going to see so it's by name checkbox 2 checkbox and so what we have is again we have by name and then our value is checkbox 2 so that looks good uh, and then we have checkbox 2 is equal to dot click and we implicitly wait and so one possibility of uh, something that might have went wrong is that the checkbox was already uh, checked. So let me see. Um, so we have it like this. So let me try to run this again, see how this goes. Drag it over. It's still not working. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to the web page and I'm going to copy, uh, I'm going to expect this and I'm going to copy the, um, I'm going to copy the selector. And uh, let me paste the selector right here. Uh, not the selector, uh, the expats. I'm going to copy the expat and I'm going to go ahead and copy expat. And then I'm going to paste the expat right here. Uh, maybe not expat. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll copy the selector. So CSS selector. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste that right here. Okay. So I actually looked a little bit more into this and I finally figured out why it was causing this issue when I was testing and not when I was uh, implementing. And so the reason that I kept getting this error that the checkbox 2 was not working was simply because when I was dragging the window over to show you the window, I was actually minimizing it. And by minimizing it, I was not displaying the checkbox. And so it's saying that the checkbox I couldn't click. So if I go ahead and run this again, but this time I don't drag over the window and I just let it stay on the other side. Then you see it passes and if I drag this over, you can see that it clicks the checkbox already. And so that's some nuances that you should uh, think about in your own code as well. Uh, now let me move on and I'm going to do a few more things and then we'll be done uh, with this video. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to paste over a function because it's a little bit longer and it's just for a simple, uh, simple concept. So go ahead and paste this function over. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm doing Firefox.get. I have this URL right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait when I get there. I'm going to find the checkbox. I'm going to select it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go through some if-else statements. So if it is already selected, I'll just print that. It's already been selected. Uh, and this is the first time through. And if it hasn't, then I'll select it. And then again, I'll check another if else and see if it's uh, selected. If it's not selected, I'll select it. And then uh, I'll print else the checkbox has been selected. And so that's essentially what I'll do is just to check if the checkbox is selected and which time it was selected. So go ahead and run this. Uh, I'm not going to drag the window over again because I have to keep it maximized on the other side. But it clicks a uh, thing. And then now uh, I'm going to scroll down and it says checkbox has been selected second time. And so basically, if it's selected, then it'll say it's already selected. So it's not. So then I'll click it. And then the second time through, 
uh, it'll just basically uh, go, this one will be false, so this one will be true, so it'll say that it was selected the second time, just to show you that we are actually checking the checkbox. Okay, next I'm going to do what the final function that we're gonna write, and this one is def test file upload, and this is with Firefox, and then I'm gonna say firefox.get, so I'm actually gonna copy over some code, just so that you see what's going on, because it's not that difficult, it's just a lot to write. So we're gonna go to this URL, we're gonna find the file upload one, file upload two on our webpage, which is basically just these choose file buttons. And then we're gonna send these uh, locations and stuff of our files. Go ahead and run that. And I'm not gonna drag over in the beginning, but I'll show you what it looks like in the end. So it's done now. So go ahead and drag over and we see that we have the web driver here and the selenium here uploaded. And yeah, so that is a basic introduction that we have for uh, element uh, interacting with different web elements using selenium in uh, Python. If you found this uh, video helpful, please give this video a like and comment uh, or like and subscribe to our channel. And yeah, we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.